That's what I wanted to find out. When I looked in the books about slavery, I wasn't in there. They had no history of me being taken out of Africa or anyone else and brought into the Americas. Everything was in Africa as it is today. Therefore, I still didn't know. I spent three weeks in Guinea. Next thing I went to Sierra Leone. Went to Sierra Leone, went to University of Sierra Leone, and I stayed here for three weeks looking in their books and talking to professors to find out how they got black people here. What happened? How'd you get them here? They really didn't know. I went from there to Ghana. When I got in Ghana, I've been there maybe three or four times, and I went to the Cape Coast Castle, which is where they said they kept enslaved Africans. I went down there, and I'm sitting down. I'm really standing around like everyone else, and they, they went through. And as they went through, they told me, Rags, look, we got to go. We got to go. Let's get out of here. It's over. You've been here four days. We, we don't know we, any, we don't know any more than we did before. I said, I want to talk to him. It's an old black man sitting there. I said, I want to talk to him. They said, you've been here four days. He hadn't said anything to you all this time. How come? I said, he said, go ahead. You can do what you want to do. So I stayed down in the dungeon with him. This man not saying anything to me at all. He hadn't spoken a word the whole time we were there. Oh, by the way, that's him right there. Is that blackness? That's serious black, right? That's how Africa was to me. The most beautiful black man on the planet. I'm looking at this man. Really, really black. So what I did was, that. now that's in Cape Coast Castle. That's me in the castle. Now, the next thing I did was, I said to him, you speak English? He didn't say anything. I said, well, maybe he didn't hear. I walked up to him and said, you speak English? He said, you ain't got to holler at me. I heard you the first time. He said, I speak 15 different languages and 12 dialects. What do you want to know? I said, why don't you answer me the first time? I'm going to talk to you. He said, because I have the power to speak when I want to and to whom I please. I said, well, he shut me down. Anyhow, he began to tell me. He began to tell me about Africa. He said, I'm going to tell you what's going on. You have to tell me. He began to tell me how the Arabs came down out of North Africa. They came down to North Africa and they were slaving. When they were slaving, they would raid the villages of East and West Africa. When they did that, they would gather people up. They would raid whole villages. They came down 2,500 strong. They had guns. You had none. You had none. You don't take a bow and arrow and a spear to a gunfight. That you're not going to win. The whole concept is to be prepared. Like in your schooling, you have to be prepared. The challenge is there for you and you can win. You are winners. That's what you are. Next thing they come, they swoop down. When they come down, they burn the village. When they burn the village, the fire goes toward the huts. When it goes toward the huts, everyone comes running out. They usually come running out naked. But what it is, you're standing there. You're a slave. You have a rope. You take that rope and you put it around their neck and you pull it tight. When you pull it tight, it takes you 25 minutes to raid the village of 2,500 people and have them on the road to slavery. The name of the game is money. I will spend $3 for you in Africa. If I get you to America, it's $1,200. You are money. That's the concept they have today about you right now. You are money. You have to understand that. Anytime they can go into India and spend $3 for a pair of sneaks, take them sneaks and bring them into America for $17 and put them in the black and Puerto Rican neighborhood for two and $300. You are money. You see? You have to know what it's all about. That's what you're here for. If we can't get money out of you because you are not educated, we're going to put you in jail because we will make the money. That's what it is. You have to learn. you got power. Knowledge is power. Is that right? Yeah. Is knowledge power? Yes. Education is a key. Is that right? Yes. Knowledge is power. Is that right? Yes. That's what I'm talking about, and you got plenty of it. Remember that. You're the best of the best. You know that? I'm the best. You're the best of the best. Is that right? Yes. And you can do whatever you want. Is that right? Yes. Why? Because knowledge is power. Is that right? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. You see? Now, what we did was, from there, they gather the people. When they gather the people up, they have them on the road to slavery. 25 minutes, they bring the village of 2,500 people, have them on the road to slavery. When this is done, we have little children running out. Little children are running out. When they run out to get to their mothers and fathers, they can't get them because they're moving along in a fast clip. Money, we got to make the ships. The ships are there. Five days, we got to run. We got 150 miles to go, and we got to run. So we're moving people in a fast clip. Little children come out. When little children come out, what do we do with them? What? 
Delta. You have to kill them. Because they've served no purpose. They're too little. So what do they do when they start screaming? What do you do? You walk back with a gun and you smash their heads. Is that right? This is slavery and not a Disney project. You see? They don't jump up like they do on a, on a video camera. They don't jump up and start running back again. This is over. This is slavery. Whole village is wiped out. When they leave, there's nothing there but smoke coming out. Because they're taking you into slavery. When they get to the first place, first hundred miles, they take and put you in a place they call a way station. That's really a process station. They're processing you to sell you to someone else. So what they do is this. They take this, which is the branding iron. This branding iron is heated white hot. Red hot for an animal, but white hot for you. Can you understand that? We will take and put you on your knees. We put you on your knees. We will put our foot in the back of the calf of your leg and step on it. And hold you out and bend you back. And take this and touch it on to your chest. It will burn the dermis, the epidermis into the muscle. It will cauterize everything and fuse it. There's no bleeding. After that, what we do then, we take palm oil, sulfur, and salt. We rub it in the wound. Rub it in the wound. We put you in a jail. We put you in that jail. We have you packed in. It takes 20 people. We put 25, 30, 40 people in the same place. It's called, it's called uh, uh, whatever it is. It's a jail. It's a barracoon. Okay? When they put you in there, you're pressed against each other. That has a covering on it then. In 72 hours, you're still pressed in. We're feeding you, but throwing water on you and also feeding you. When we throw water on you, it keeps you cool, but nonetheless, you cannot sit down. You're standing there pressed in until the ships come and we can get you out. But what happens is that you're standing there, you lean against each other. If you lean against each other, you rub against each other, and that wound opens. When it opens, it oozes down. Everyone's back there for you, and now infected. We have 30 or 40 people infected, so we do. We open the gate. And we bring them out so I lay them on the sand. We lay them on the sand and we throw water on them. We throw seawater on you and you who do not survive take you by your hands and feet and we walk you to the edge of the cliff because we're traveling the coast road and we cast your body into the sea. You who stay alive, this is what we do to you. We take and put you on this. Now, I'm going to ask you real quick. Answer me real quick. What is this? Quick, answer. It's a chain necklace? Okay, now, this is a coffle. Not a coffle, I'm sorry. This is a tether. A tether you tie something up with. This is also a leash. What do you use a leash for? A dog. What do you use a leash for? A dog. You take this, and you put it on this post. This post is six feet tall. You put it on this post, and you put this around your axe. And we bend it to conform to gang and push the lock down so it doesn't come out. You now tether there like a dog with no clothes on. We have 25 of you lined up like that. You are tethered there like a dog. This is why I have a problem with the young brothers calling each other's dogs in the N-word. I got a problem with that because that's not what you are. You're the best of the best. You call a woman out of her name, don't do that. Always have they're the best of the best. They keep us in our place and we're the best of the best. Let's travel like that. Let's travel together because we can do it. We can do anything we want. Is that right? That's right. As long as it's right. Is that right? You can do it. Put your hands together and we can win anything. All right? Now, the next thing we do, we take you and put you there. We put you there. We come by and we look at you. There's 25 people lined up. We follow you. Do a job on you feel all over you, look at you, because we're selling you. People buy you, when they buy you, they take you off of this. This is taken off. When they take it off, then what they do, they put this on. This is the middle passage gap. That's what this is. They will walk you 50 miles with this on. 50 miles. Then we put you on the slave ships. Slave ships are waiting for you, so here we are. When we get you onto the slave ship, we have a priest there. That priest will sprinkle holy water on you so you cannot bring evil spirits aboard that slave ship. Can you understand that? That's an oxymoron, right? Okay. Now, the next thing we do is what? We cannot, we, the, the ship only holds 450. It's called the Brooks out of Liverpool in the 1700s. Now you have a problem. We have 650 people to put on a ship that holds 450 people. 
how are we going to handle that? On most of the ships, they had them laying down. Remember that? You see them laying down, but see they have another problem. Because they're only laying down in a 14-foot space on their backs or on their fronts. So therefore, they can't turn. If they can't turn, they will get pneumonia, the respiratory system will collapse, and they will die. So then we're losing product. How are we going to handle that? This is what we do. We'll do this. We'll do this. We're going to build decks. Can I steal you for a little bit? Come on, don't be afraid. I'm going to let you go, okay? Yeah, sit right here real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Put you right there. Good. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. Alright, oh by the way, this is George right here. This is George, so you know. So you know, so you, now you're not afraid. This is George. He's been here for a little while. If you want to talk to him, you can. He's not gonna tell me what you see. Alright? He, 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 he wakes up at night. Yeah. No, no, sorry. Okay, now, this is how we have him. Can you put your feet up in this chair? Up here. Put the other one up. Now, you see how he is? We're going to put him on a slave ship like this. In the bottom row, we have four abreast. We have four people sitting just like this. And 25 forward, that's 100 people in a space 37 inches high, four and a half feet wide. Okay? The next deck, we're going to put the deck up here, do the same thing. 100, 100. That means on this side of the ship, we got 300. On the other side, we got 300. We got 600 people on the ship that only holds 450. In the bow of the ship, we have women and small children. Yes, quickly. What if they tall? Stand up, I can't hear you. What if they tall? Say it again. What if they're tall? What if they're what? Tall. tall. They're stuck in that place. Just being tall. Okay? That's what it is. We're not we're not we're not concerned about it. We just getting you on the ship, okay? Quickly. Um, what were the ships made You have to stand up now. What were the ships made out of? Wood. All wood, yeah. So okay. wooden sails. Now, they have they have him like this. When they have him like this, they have him with his legs open. Okay, listen, listen. They have him with his legs open. Like you sit on the gym floor, you have your legs open and have your hands on around your knees. And the next person they sit. Don't be afraid. Put your legs. I'm not going to bite you. That's right. Put your feet down. Now, put your feet. now, the next person will sit right here. <laughs> the next person will sit right here because we have we need the room. So we're pushing now. His head is this close to the back of the next man's head. That's how he's sitting in tight. Now with that in mind, we have 25 people forward. Four abreast, we have 100 people down there. We're throwing water on you every every hour, every two hours. We throw sea water on you to keep you cool because down below deck. It's 110 to 120 degrees. Oh. Down here, he's shot. Now this is shot. This goes on his leg like that. And, you see this? This is how it's done. This goes on George's leg. This bar goes through, and this goes on his leg. Okay? Now, it's done like this. Just like this. Lock down like that. You want to George right quick. Like that. Now, he's locked in with George. You guys can stand up if you want. Okay? He's locked in with he's locked in with you, you guys in the front don't have to. He's locked in. He's locked in with George. He can't get out at all. Can you hear me? He can't get out at all. He's in the lock quiet down. I got you. He's uh he's he's locked down. He can't get out. When he can't get out, we have someone else locked on to him. Because now, what do we do? What do we do? We take a put. Once we put that lock on, we put this on, and it can't come off. It has a lock on it. It will not come off. The only way it comes off is we take it off. That means if the ship goes down, he's shackled down here. Now, another thing we have on him is this. This is on his neck, like this. And his wrist are like that. Now, this, all that's on him. Now, you have 600 people on board. Quiet now. You have 600 board on, people on board with the same manacles on. Now, as this goes, we have him there. We're feeding him. We're feeding him with a long handle spoon because Mother Africa didn't raise no punks. That means he's a warrior. 
If he is a warrior, then we're afraid of him. We have people down there to feed him. We're coming down to feed you. We have a cart to go down the center, a man in front with a gun, a man in the back. We're feeding you with a long handle spoon. You have four people to keep their feet. One, two, three, four. As the spoon comes across, we eat off because they have horse beans, a mush, and they heat it. When they heat it, it gets to be thick. So when they dig in it, they can feed you because it won't fall off the spoon. You then are eating it. We put, we put horse beans, we put some kind of vegetables in it that really are, are rotten, and we fix up some meat. You are, veg you are a vegetarian. You do not eat meat as such. We put a lot of pork in it. We make it taste good, and we put molasses in it. Molasses makes it taste good and palatable for you. As we're feeding you this, we are four weeks to get into the West Indies. The first week, week and a half, with the ship doing like this, your stomach starts turning, is that right? When it starts turning, what are you going to do? On who? One in front of you, right? And you got 600 people doing that, okay? Now, as this goes, as this goes, we're still throwing water on you. And also, right here, we have the same thing. We're feeding you. As we feed you, you have to let it out. When you let it out, now you're sitting where? You're sitting in an inch, an inch and a half of human waste. That's what you're sitting in. This is aboard a slave ship and not a Disney situation. You see one thing. The reason they did not put in the history books as to how they treated you on those slave ships is because you would be in the right position all the time and you wouldn't stand for it. You see? If you knew how bad and how hard it was for them to keep you from reading, writing, and understanding anything, you'd be a super, super people. You have to learn what it costs. And people pay a heavy price to get here so you could be here. They paid for it. You didn't get in here free. All right? Now, as this happens, as this happens, he's there. As we throw water on you, it runs down through the loose boards. We have three decks. It's pouring down through the loose boards. Everything is running on him. He's saying, there's nothing he can do. When the water hits him, it goes down to the bottom. When it goes down to the bottom, now the one on the bottom is sitting in 11 to 12 inches of human waste. He's actually sitting in a toilet. You see? This is the border slave ship. Now, England abolished slavery in 1803 and on the high seas in 1807. When they did that, they would send the British men of war out to hunt down the slave ships. And when they did that, the thing, the way they could find them was, he said, the way we could find them was the, the seagulls, the sharks, and they could the smell, smell it for five miles. You see? Now, as this goes, we have rats on board. Rats are gnawing on George. George has died. When George dies, now you have another problem. You have maggots on board. Is that right? They're all over you. But what you're doing, you're kicking them down, but what you're still shackled to him. This is rampant. You got water running on the ship. The smell is awful, but you're living in it. There's no ventilation. Now, once that's done, we say we got to get you out of here because now we're getting close to land. We have a week out to get you into the West End. We're going to clean you up. So what we begin to do, we begin to take you out. When we begin to take you up, we begin to crack the shackles and bring them down from the top. We bring them down from the top because of the, of the sledge down the bottom of the ship. I'm not going down there. So we have black people that are culpable in what we're doing. So they will go down there. When they go down there to get you out, what they would do is like this. So take the shack these shackles. And We'll get him up. I want you to step right down here. Now, remember, he's been sitting like that. Leave your leg right there. He's been sitting like that for three weeks. His knees won't move, is that right? His muscles have atrophy. That means we have to take a paddle. And we begin to beat his legs. When we beat his legs, it causes the blood to flow. Now, we learn from that that what we should do is let him come up on board and run around and save us all that problem. But we didn't learn that on this trip. We begin to beat his leg. Now we have another tribe that is against him and they begin to beat his knees. Now he's a cripple. He's of no value to me. We take him out. You ready? Step. Do it. Step. Step. That's right. Now, remember one thing. This shackle will not give. When he moves off, George is still shackled to him. George is dead, his body decomposed. When he steps, he pulls by George's body apart. He takes a piece of George's body with him in that shackle. What we do then, 
we pull the shackle off of him up on board. When we pull him up, up on board, we put it in a box or in a barrel. We put it in a barrel because we're going to re reuse it. And we walk him up the flank, and he's standing there. He's standing there. Now remember, he has not seen daylight for three weeks, not since we captured him out of Africa. Therefore, his pupils have dilated. That means he got adjusted to it. Now, once it adjusts to the daylight, he can see the beauty of the water. The water is blue and beautiful in the Mediterranean. He can smell fresh air coming in from the West Indies. The birds, something he has not had. What is he going to do? What are you going to do now? Right. You have no shackles on you. What are you going to do? Right. You going to run? But quickly now, quickly, just answer. Fight. Not a dialogue, just answer. Fight. What are you going to do? Fight. Run? Right. I can't hear you. Right. Right. You want to ship? I'm killing people. Fight. 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 You want to fight? Okay. Now, you now wait, wait now. You want to fight? You want to fight? I'm here with a gun. I'm here with a gun. Everybody else with a gun, and we have whips like this. We have whips like this. Okay. Now we have going quickly. If we all work together, we'll kill all you. Okay. Now quiet, 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 quiet. Now the one thing, quiet now. Now this is what's going to happen. He wants to jump overboard. But he has not considered that he's 500 miles from home. He's not going to make that one. Okay? Another thing he wants to do, he wants to jump in that water. But meanwhile, I see him. I see him. And I'm his keeper. I, that is my product. If he jumps overboard, everybody else is going to start jumping over. I'm going to lose money. I call for my other buddy. I said, we have a jumper. I take this whip and I swing it. When I swing it, and snap it. It goes across his chest and opens his chest up. When it does that, it doesn't make any difference because he wants to be free. How bad does he want to be free? He dives in the water. One thing he has not considered is there are sharks seven feet below the surface. They're waiting for their feeding, traveling in shipping lanes for two or three hundred years, eating sweet meat, which is you, as they throw overboard. They tell me if the sea would give up the dead in it right now, as we sit in this room. You could walk on a bridge eight feet wide by 8,000 miles long that was stretched from the coast of Africa to the coast of South Carolina on the beach bones of black folk that were thrown overboard on the Middle Passage. Do you understand what I just said? Yeah. Can you understand what I said? Yeah. Blood was paid. Now, he hits the water. When he hits the water, he goes down seven feet, which is his dive. And he turns to come up, he feels the water just getting in his veins. He feels good. He can make it. Looks up, he's close to the surface. He sees the sun coming through the water. He sees it, and he reaches up to get it, but something grabs him like that. When it grabs him like that, he starts screaming, but he's pulling in water. It drags him 30 feet this way. When it lets him go, he's in pain and agony. Another one grabs him here, cuts his stomach out, and drags him deep. All he sees is blackness. The only thing that came to the surface is the blood that he shed to be free. That's all. You see, this is what it's all about. Somebody paid in blood for us to be here today. We didn't get here free. Gerard didn't get here free. And neither did you. It's costing every day. Freedom is not free. That's why we're working so hard to get it and keep it. They tell me there was a song sung by a young brother, and you probably heard his name. His name was Michael Jackson. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And the song was what? The Man in the Mirror? Is that right? And the song said, I'm talking about the man in the mirror. And I'm asking him to change his ways. He said, no message could be any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourselves. You can make the change. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hopefully you have a better understanding of just what it was like to be a slave. Just what it was like for our people who suffered aboard these slave ships, which were, in fact, death ships. Those who survived paid the horrible and the most harrowing price. But we're still here. It's amazing, isn't it? Doesn't that show, show you how powerful and how strong we must be? So again, be empowered by the information that we share with you. As you go through the museum, there are a lot of text panels that you see where I have uh, done a lot of research and written a lot of the items down. I want you to take time and read them. You're going to learn a lot as you go through this museum. So I'm going to ask you to stand up.
You can follow Mr. Ragsdale as we start the tour. You can leave your bags there. Everything is safe. You can just put them in the chair, all right? Over the other side are cowrie shells. If you see them, they were used by Brazil. Brazil had, Brazil had more black people than any other nation on earth outside of Africa. Most of them were there because he had diamonds and gold. That's the shackle that we talked about. All right? Now, this one right here, excuse me, little person. Right here. This shackle right here is called a slave shackle proper. That comes off of a slave ship proper. It was on a slave ship. We have three of them in the museum. What that will do, what that will do, if they have someone they cannot control on board a ship and he's giving me trouble, I will take that and put it on his legs. When I put it on his ankles, when I put it on his ankles, I will bend it to conform. When I bend it to conform, I'll put a hook in that. When I put a hook in that, I will pull him upside down on a mainsail naked. As that happens, as he comes up, I will take this. I will take this, and as he goes past me, I will do like that, and I will hook it right in his scrotum, and as they pull, I will pull him open. When he opens, his intestines will fall across his face. I will then bring you up out of the bowels of the ship and say, this is what's going to happen to you if you rebel against us. Now he's ruling by fear. Nobody wants to die like that. They don't mind dying, but they don't want to die like that. That's what this is all about. Now, on this wall over here, stands the page. Right here. This, this, uh, this, this map was only about a nine, uh, 8 by 10. I enlarged it so you can see what it is. Maul brothers, back in the 1700s, began to divide parts of Africa and call it Negro land. If you look at it, how they would bring, raid the village and bring them out through Guinea, down beneath the, the Gold Coast. All this was where they had the slave ships parked. When they would load the ships, they were gathering out 10,000 people a day. The name of the game is money. Up here is Goree Island, that's in Senegal. Right here is that was Cape Coast Castle when I was there. Over on the other side, excuse me, stand right here. Over on the other side, this is Cape Coast Castle now. It's been washed and cleaned and made so the slavery does not even exist. Right down here, that's Elmina Castle, which is right down the street from Cape Coast. In this case right here, excuse me. In this case right here, a guns of the trade. In this case right here. If you ever studied guns and looked at a blunderbuss, that's what it is. That's the one you put rocks off and then shoot at people back in the day. Right here, right here, on this picture right here, it was done by Brother Gill for us. This is Africa before the advent of slavery. This is how you live right here. When this was taken, they came in, they began to raid the villages, they began to put you on board ships and sail you around the Cape. When they sailed you around the Cape, you came into Rhode Island. When you got into Rhode Island, they enslaved you. They sent you south on the back of black folk. Cotton was made king. You are a slave in America, but your roots are in Africa. Can you see that? Over here, for the 10 precepts of, of American slavery jurisprudence, this is done by the Honorable A. Leon Hickenbotham, judge of the Third Circuit Court. He had these 10 precepts. These 10 precepts that came out of Jamestown in the 15 to 1600s. He wrote about that to make you understand what happened. You have inferiority, property, powerless, keep blacks as powerless as you can be, racial purity, always preserve the white male dominance, manumission and free, don't let you be free, family, recognize no rights of the black family, destroy the unity of the black family, don't teach, give slaves the right to marriage, demean and degrade black women, Black men, black parents, and black children then condemn them for their conduct in their state of mind. Is that what they're doing to you now? Yes. You see? And you're helping by calling each other names and fighting each other. This and hating each other, you see? This is That's bad. This is, no, this, is, this is back in the 1670s, 1800s, and it's on now. This, they're talking about right now. Yeah. No, I'm saying this is before the William S. Slater Act. Oh, yeah. We can talk about that. Yeah. We can talk about that. Education and culture. Deny blacks any education. Deny the knowledge of their culture and make it a crime to teach black folk how to read and write. You see? It's all in writing. You understand? You have to be the best. You have to be the best. You don't have a right to be anything else. Religion, education, liberty, resistance, and it's all by any means possible. Okay? Any questions?
Yeah. All right, come around here, you guys. Oh, this is the truck? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on, quickly now, quickly. What we're gonna what we're gonna do is what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, when you come through again, we'll let some other people look at it, okay? Okay. Now this goes around your neck like this. It goes around your neck like this. This is for a man. And what it does, it goes down near his private. That's what it is to keep him from running. This ball weighs 15 pounds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, go on through you guys. Alright, go on through. If you look in this case, you'll find that yoke is in this case. It's not it's a tree branch, young people. It's a yoke. Right here. This one right here is also a kind of yoke. Right quick. This one right here. I put this I put this uh, hinge in it. Because when I take it to schools, I keep losing pieces of it. This right here. It pinch my skin. What happens is the chain here and the chain on the other side. I am hooked to someone else. If I fall down, they continue to move. I could actually lose my head. Okay? You can touch it. Just don't try to take it home, okay? <laughs> you see how it's falling apart? That's why I had to seal it. It'll fall apart. It'll fall apart. Just put it, it'll fall apart. I had five of them and they all turned to dust because it was so old. Okay? Over here. Over here, right here. You saw this whip? You saw this right here? This is this is uh this guy's his name is Gordon. Gordon came through Union Lines in 1862. The Surgeon General took pictures of his back. That's what you get. Mr. Rags. Yes, ma'am. Could you come here again so he can get that shot? Uh, they'll you'll carry it like this. You can walk when you carry it like this, you can, if you don't die first. When you get off that chain gang, and they let you back into the neighborhood. When you go back in the neighborhood, you'll be walking like this. That's how you walk. We, we picked that up. Remember George Jefferson used to walk like that? We picked that up. That came from slavery. Fast forward to the day. Fast forward to the day. You have young boys in prison, is that right? Their pants are hanging down, right? What are the children in the street mimicking now? It's the same thing. Is that right? The same thing. My question is this. This one right here, this ball here, that one weighs 65, this is 110. This goes around your neck. How you going? Okay. Just like this. This goes around your neck just like this. Okay. You don't This is another means of whipping. This is a paddle. And my wife, when? Well, you know, a lot of uh, fraternities use paddles to induct their uh, pledgees. I tell you, young men, if you go off to college and you decide to join a fraternity, do not allow yourself to be hazed. That is a vestige of slavery. We should not allow anything to be done to us that was learned from slavery. Now that you know better, you do better. Especially tell them the you know your history. Especially the white fraternity. At, something and big. many of the black ones. Right. There's a, a um, University of Florida just uh, had a young man go to jail for hazing a guy to death. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, That's I right. Saw that That's right. It's happening more and more if they don't know when to stop. Absolutely. When? Over yeah. here, over here are slave tags. Sometimes slave owners would loan you their slaves them. out to other plantations. And the males, because they would only let, loan, them, loan the males out, they would have to travel at night after working all day and they would have to travel sometimes for miles. And they would have to have a tag or a piece of paper indicating what plantation they belonged to and sometimes the kind of work that they did. It would say servant or laborer, and it would have the uh, uh, plantation name. Now, if you were stopped by white men who were patrolling the, the, the roads at night, they were called slave patrollers. They were looking for runaways. If you were stopped and you didn't have a tag or a piece of paper, they could beat you up, sometimes kill you, and or sell you back into slavery. Now, compare 
what happened during slavery with the stop and frisk laws that exist today, where they can stop black and brown men just for walking while black. It's the same thing. It's a vestige of slavery. As I tell you, what I told you in the beginning, connect the dots as you go through the museum, because there's a lot of information that we're sharing with you that is just as pertinent today. Slave auctions. That's where they would sell you. Sometimes they would sell an entire family, the mother, the father, and the children. By a show of hands, which family members do you think they would sell first? The children? How many think the children would be sold first? Okay, that's a good number of hands. All right, put your hands down. How many think the mothers would be sold first? Okay, just a few more. Put your hands down. How many think the fathers would be sold first? Those who raised their hands and said fathers, you were right. Thank they you. would always sell the father first. Why? To break up the family. To break up the family. You are absolutely right. To break up the family. When they introduce welfare into the system to help mothers feed their children, they call it mother's assistance. But you know what they told the mothers? You can't have they a husband. Have any, right? Get rid of your man. Families started falling apart from that point on. In Africa, families were very, very important. They did everything to stay together. It, you weren't even allowed to be married during slavery. We wanted nothing more to be married th than to be together. Slavery interrupted that family existence. And look at what's happening to our families today with so many mis missing fathers. Fathers who couldn't, who couldn't do anything to help their, their children, who had to stand by as their, wives, their wife and children were molested or their sons beaten right in front of them. He just left. He be became alcoholic. He became a drug user because he just couldn't stand it. He had to find a way to medicate himself. So understand, slavery is still impacting our families today. We talked about brandings. Sometimes a slave would have three or four brandings in their lifetime because every time you were sold, you had to get another a brand because that showed the mark of ownership. All right? Today, you have many blacks and some whites who actually voluntarily have themselves branded. But when you know better, you do better. And you should know better now. We also have permanent tattoos. A lot of young people are into tattoos. This is a picture of a young girl. She was 16 years old. I hid her face because I didn't have her permission, but I was so intrigued by that big tattoo that she had on her chest. I went and asked her what it was, and she said it was her baby's daddy's name. So I said, so did you get married? She said, no, we're not even together anymore. Bruh. I said, but you're going to have this mark on your body for the rest of your life. That you're going to get a cover-up, probably. Probably. I guess I'm worried. Probably. But I just tell, tell you to understand, these things had to happen during slavery. When you know better, you do better. All right? Here. This is plantation life. This is where we made a way out of no way. Sundays was the only day off that slaves had, and they had to find that they had to use that one day to do what their personal needs were, washing their clothes, doing their hair, or whatever else. Also on Sundays, the slave master that had children by his slave women, he would send they would send the wives the white wives away, and the white wives would have tea, and the master would sit on the porch with his biracial babies, and they called them porch monkeys. They would call these children porch monkeys. They would say, look at Massa sitting on the porch with his porch monkeys. That's where the term came from. This is what a typical slave cabin looked like. This is what a typical slave cabin looked like on a well-to-do plantation. They had cement slave cabins made out of limestone, sand, and seashells. In this case here is a picture of Mr. Ragsdale picking up that rock from a former plantation that was owned by Reynolds Aluminum Company, St. Simon's Island, uh, uh, Georgia. And that's him picking up what was left of the slave cabins. So again, slavery was cruel and it was constant. It never stopped. I'm going to ask you to follow me in here. And watch your step because there's a little step up here. All right? You may want to move up that way so you can get a good picture. And just face me. Just come in and face me. Turn the big light on. Uh, that's scary. Come on, everybody, you can gather around the case there. I want to make sure everybody's in before I get started. Let her talk. talk. That's she. She's going to talk to you. I want you to face me. I just bring your attention to this wall. Is everybody in? Come on in. 
<laughs> On this wall, we've already surpassed the numbers of deaths done at the hands of others. We are killing each other to the point where we have more men in jail and in prison than we have in college. That's a disgrace. We must learn from the lessons of slavery, lest we forget. I want you to look at the birth dates and the death dates on those obituaries and recognize that many of these young men and women were, were shot down and killed in the prime of their lives. Some of them are our own family members. You may have had some family members or friends who are, who are, who are gone as a result of gun violence. It's too much. It must stop. We have to learn the lessons of slavery, young people. We can no longer afford to allow these things to repeat itself. So I've asked you to pay attention, connect the dots. You're on your way to doing the right thing because you're in a school where you're getting a good education. Education is the key. And knowledge is what? Power. Knowledge is what? Power. Knowledge is what? Power. And when you know better, you do better. You have the power. Now move forward and do something with that power. Thank you very much for your...